Think not the Lord came to peace on this earth. He came to the sword. Shalom, name of the Lord, everybody. Welcome to Time of Night Watch. Time of Night Watch. Time of commentary, information, Bible prophecy, stuff. And here we are, entering through the second day and the second evening of the next day of this one Sabbath known the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Yes, here we are. Coming here to sundown. It's now 5.46 p.m. here at Central Standard Time. I figure we have uh, two more hours before sundown. So here I give it to you. So at this point... Biblically, we should be thinking that Jesus is currently in the tomb, going on his soon to be the second day in the tomb. Interesting how that works. Math is so complicated, even when you have to count to three. All right, so we had Passover last night at sundown, of course. We had a large Seder, and today, of course, is the Feast of Unleavened Bread. The word leaven occurs 98 times in the Bible, 75 times in the Old Testament, and about 23 times in the New Testament. And it is always used in a bad sense except once in Matthew 13, 33. In every other instance that leaven is used in scripture, it is used to symbolize evil, either in doctrine or practice. Leaven typifies sin, human weakness, infirmities, false doctrine, and corrupt practices. The Hebrew word used for leavening in scripture is chametz. It literally means sour. It is that essence by which... Things decay. It is a fermentation process, a process of death. So think about it. We talk about Daniel 7.25, how a spirit of Antichrist changes times and laws. So in a sense, if you're doing any other practice other than observing God's laws and commandments, you are participating in acts of evil. Yeah, think about that. All these people who are talking about uh, Easter Sunday and all this other nonsense that's going on around us, well, we clearly know that Ishtar is clearly a false god, and it would be considered evil in the sight of the Lord. Of course, all chasing down of rabbits, and which is an unclean animal, actually, according to God's laws, as well as chasing down eggs, if you will. It's all paganistic. It's satanic, let's face it. It's, and you're like, look at Daniel 7.25, the spirit of Antichrist is the changing times of loss. That is exactly what they do. And it's interesting because there is a woe that comes to those people who call good evil and evil for good because they call Ishtar or Easter good is actually evil and evil good. That means a woe will come into your household and all those who abide in that kind of thinking. Yet those who are, uh, commit to observing God's laws and commandments, we're looking at people who are without chametz or sin, if you will. So, you know, it's, 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 a, it's a very important point. So like I said, we're going into the second day of now the Feast of Unleavened Bread. We had Passover last night. Uh, we were going into the second day in which Jesus was in the tomb. Uh, of course, if you participate in the Seder, you'll know the afikomen is that piece of the Unleavened Bread that's broken in half, interesting enough. The symbology there, broken in half, thinking broken, you know, Jesus broken. And then hidden away. Yes, hidden away. The other half is hidden away. Like in this case, put in the tomb for three days. So the 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 parallels are so extraordinary. That how can you not realize that there's something fundamentally important here? So then the question is, what is why do you have so much chametz in your life? If you continue to follow up the false doctrines, which clearly is evil in the sight of God, and yet you proclaim to say Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior, what is committing, committing you from not following the right God? You know, Lord talks about those people who are double-minded, well, they're unstable in all the ways, have no fellowship with them. So which one is it? Either you serve one master or hate the other, or you hate one master and love the other. Which one is it? Do you serve the Almighty God through Jesus Christ, Yeshua, HaMashiach? Or do you serve Satan? Yeah, that's, that's where it comes down. Or the spirit of Antichrist, or the son of perdition, however you want to put it. Which God do you serve? And you know, as we get closer and closer to his coming, this has become a very integral point when it comes to belief, fellowship, as well as judgment. Mm -hmm. You know, Scripture says judgment comes to the house of the Lord first. So who are you having fellowship with? Who are you having communion with? if you will, when Passover is the ep epitome of what communion is in the sight of God. Are you continuing to participate in evil, calling it good? And the Bible says, woe unto you. Now, if you don't understand what a woe is, that is a curse. A curse will come unto you. Now, the scary part about being a curse or such a woe, that God will purposely give you over to strong delusion. You really, really believe what you believe, <clears throat> even though it's a false, you believe it as a truth. 
<clears throat> you think this is the epitome of your doctrine, that following a false doctrine is actually your true doctrine. You see what the problem is here? I mean, God wrote his commandments, ten of them, in stone. Okay? It means unchanging. Now, we know uh, this feast time is a Sabbath time, so do we not recognize God's Sabbath? You understand, God's Sabbaths, there are those Sabbaths that are made up for us, which is the weekly Sabbath, that is basically for us, as God wrote. But these are like appointed times. Mm -hmm. We'll go into the scriptures pretty those appointed times, even in the epistles. The appointed times, we, we are to gather ourselves together, or participate in a communion, or Passover Seder, <clears throat> and doing such things as God commanded us. It's like going out for a date. You ever have a date night with your wife or girlfriend or boyfriend or whatever case may be? Have you ever had a date night and not make it to the date? Either you're late or you got distracted, something else came along. Did I see more important than the date itself? Well, think about that with God. All right, God gave you an appointed date to meet you here at a certain place at a certain time to do a certain thing. And you decide, well, I'm not going to do it because other things have come of importance. And it commonly people, what they do is they want to appease one another. Well, we talked about that in the Matthew as well, too, about, you know, one having a variant to another. I mean, look at what the scripture says. What does light have to do with darkness? What does darkness have to do with light? We, if we cannot discern just by observing the Torah, then who do we observe? You know, the, the thoughts and wisdom of a man is not the ways of the Almighty God, but the ways of God are pretty straight and narrow. Assuming you are doing your homework, you're studying, and you're applying these things in your lives. Let me tell you something straight up. Straight up. If you're following the ways of the Almighty God through Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach, if you are following in His ways, the world is going to hate you. Your family is going to hate you. Your friends or so-called friends are going to hate you. Because they're not like-minded. They're going to feel inferior in many ways. They're going to think, well, you were better than us because of this, that, and the other thing. It's not that I'm better than you. I just choose a better way of living. Unlike some of my neighbors here who like to smoke and drink and act stupid all the time. I just can't live like that. I can't fellowship with that. They make it impossible to have that kind of fellowship. The bottom line is, Jesus says, if you love me, again, the infamous word, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. And this holy commandment is no different than any other commandment. If you love him, you will keep his commandments. And often I hear the, the legalisms as a, well, there's only two commandments. But those are general summary commandments. Hmm? Do you understand what a summary is or a general summary commandment is? I mean, it covers all these other commandments. Love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind. And love thy neighbor as you love thyself. Well, what does it take to love the Lord thy God with all thy soul and mind? Keeping his commandments. Keeping his Sabbaths. Keeping his feasts. Observing his laws and commandments. you got to stand too. God's a God of circumstance. So what is your circumstance? What are you trying to avoid of doing? Or you're just so busy trying to please your friends, your neighbors, your mother, your father, your sister, your brother, whatever. Are you here to please God? Or are you here to please man? That's the big question now. So here we are, we're going into the second day of this feast week, if you will, which is a feast of unleavened bread. We are, of course, eating unleavened bread in my household because of me, me and my house, we shall serve God. And that's how it should be for everybody. Maybe you're just discovering this. Maybe you're just learning it. Well, you know, there's always a new beginning. So what point in time are you begin observing and participating, not just in your faith, but in your relationship with the Holy God, through Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach? At one point in time, you're going to put aside all this worldly nonsense and focus on what God wants you to do. Granted, not everyone, not anyone could just fall into this overnight. God is a God of circumstance. But the opportunity is there. Do something to participate in this day. This is his appointed time. His appointed time. So what is your circumstance? Are your circumstances so profoundly out of whack that you cannot participate in this? Or have you did, may purposely put something in the place of the very thing you should be doing, which is participating in Passover Seder or the Feast of Unleavened Bread? What are you doing? Where is your conviction? Where is your commitment? That's what I have to ask you. Because before you know it, we're going to stand before a holy God. And the question is, what will be your excuse your excuse will be answered 
I never knew you. Depart from me, ye who do iniquity. Because it is sin. It is evil in the sight of God. Anyway, this is the time of night watch. Been time of night watch time. Content information, Bible prophecy stuff. See ya. Don't want to be ya. And remember, there is only one way, only one truth, and only one life. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless.